All right, so let's talk a little bit about the architecture. Um, when I'm talking about it, I'm going to reference two diagrams uh, located in the docs. One's code structure, and the other one is IoT architecture. Uh, for the IoT architecture, um, really what's happening is the device software is running in a BeagleBone-like device. This could be uh, a Raspberry Pi or a, uh, another Linux machine with a USB to I2C dongle. Inside this, it's running uh, all of the device software, which we've touched on, or we'll, we will touch on in a bit more in the future. Uh, this embedded Linux uh, controller is talking to a central nervous system board, which is basically just an I2C router to communicate with different sensors and actuators. Um, since different sensors and actuators can be located uh, and different ports and have uh, the same addresses. We need like this this multiplexing system to uh, route uh, each of the I squared C channels back to the device controller. Then once the device controller has all the communication with the sensors and actuators and is in the process of, of running a recipe, it's going to be generating data and it's going to want to listen to commands from the uh, the cloud platform. So this is done over the Google Cloud platform uh, pub sub module, uh, which is built up on top of uh, MQTT um, and uh, on si inside the Google Cloud platform. Uh, there's a few different elements in there. There's the app engine, which is running uh, all of our, our front-end apps that are built on React and Flask. Um, and these are a bit more uh, customized interfaces as opposed to the interface on uh, running from the device software that's more of just a button exposure uh, to break out all of the different functions that are useful when you're provisioning a device uh, or just doing the, the initial setup um, and verification of, of a device. So on the cloud platform, the UIs that you'll see are more for education orientation or scientific orientation. Also, there's uh, a data warehouse and a blob storage for collecting all the data that's generated from uh, the uh, individual devices and of course all of the uh, information for user profiles, storing recipes, devices, etc. So jumping back to the device software, uh, everything is uh, run from the project root. So within the project root there's docs, data, tests, and scripts. Um, we can dig into those later, but the main thing that gets that happens is a run script or a simulate script is executed, um, and this will uh, instantiate uh, a Django app, which has a Postgres database and provides uh, on-device UI and REST API. Uh, the REST API can be nice for communicating with uh, other local IoT devices, such as an Alexa or Google Home Hub sort of thing. Then the Django app spawns the coordinator thread, which in turn spawns all of the other threads like the network, utility, upgrade, recipe, IoT, and resource, as well as uh, creating and then spawning the peripheral and controller threads based on the device configuration that's passed to it. Um, we're going to keep this, uh, this video uh, pretty, pretty short, so this is where I'm going to end it, and uh, we'll continue uh, in the next one.